Now starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Oh, sorry about that. Do you hear me now? I actually didn't realize that my microphone was was uh, was not down. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Thank you, Brian, for checking in. So I will just very quickly repeat it. What I said, not nothing uh, major, but still, uh, we're going to take a look at momentum and correction patterns. First of all, in the Forex market, in the majors, the major crosses, then any instrument you would like to take a look at, so let me know. It could be stock indices or commodities or CFTs. Second, the webinar is going to be a bit shorter, unfortunately. Uh, sorry for this, uh, the fact of the sound, but it's going to be shorter because of, of a scheduling conflict uh, by accident. So we need to close 5 uh, to 5 at about 25 minutes from now, 20, 25 minutes from now. Sorry for that. And uh, quickly, these disclaimers, I have to repeat that, that... This webinar is shown to a global audience, but may not be suitable for everyone. Therefore, please visit AdvanceMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence, and contact the appropriate entity to find out if this webinar is suitable for you. And the second disclaimer explains the fact that trading for exchange and, and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer. And you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, with no longer ado, let's take a look at these charts. Time goes fast, especially now that the webinar is shorter than usual. All right, so um, your dollar basically is making a correction to the downside, I thought, I think. And uh, it, it seems to be doing that strong momentum. Maybe you watched my video on Monday and I said that this is momentum so there's a likely zigzag taking place and as soon as price basically broke to the weekly pivot point you know there was a good chance of the, of the zigzag continuing lower uh, and it hit the long to moving average 144 EMA and bounced from there so at this moment uh, basically I think that price is making a three wave correction we have obviously an uptrend here but I think that we are seeing kind of an A uh, and, and a B and now maybe a C pattern correction here that could take us back to the S1 and up again for one more push up, the wave five of wave five, the last push up before I, th I would expect a new downtrend again. So I don't want to bore you too much with the euro dollar long term analysis because most of you have already probably heard it from me. If not, let me know and I'll still show you. Uh, but if I don't hear from you, you probably know it already, and I don't want to be too repetitive here. So, so in the intermediate short term, I'm expecting price to get roughly to this S1. Doesn't have to get there exactly. I mean, if we look at the four hour chart and put a fib on this swing high, swing low, 
you can see that we more or less bounce at the 61.8 fib so that could be a bouncing spot plus the long-term moving average on the four-hour chart so that or if it does continue lower then there's a good chance that price could get down to 122.50 and the 88.6 fib and the s1 and the previous bottom and that could be then the bouncing spot for wave five if price would break does break through this bottom the 100 fib level at 122 that would change things also depends how it breaks so i'm not going to jump in a short immediately when it breaks but it is a it is a decision zone and if price does break through that it would be an alarm bell for me that the bullish kind of analysis i have is under threat and is not that likely anymore and yes the trend could change and yes we might be starting a bearish downtrend at that moment but no i would not be trading it immediately i would have to probably see how it breaks and i would have to see some kind of flag like this and and then i and then i would be interested in trading it down to the long to moving average of the four hour chart sorry this is the daily chart excuse me uh and back to about 120 and the s3 probably as you can see like this all right so basically this decision zone here very very important we have to see how price responds to that does it break through it does it bounce that's something i'm keeping an eye on i myself traded the euro dollar up and down i traded uh the breakout here as price was breaking through this resistance level to the upside i managed to squeeze out uh well actually i didn't squeeze out i actually uh exited the trade earlier but i did uh see traders who were were looking at my analysis managed to uh, basically with the help of our um, telegram uh, channel basically uh not not through admin markets of course through our own website um basically hang in to to about 125 so that's great and uh, i did trade a short and from this zone basically down to 123.25 and that trade i did close uh in um in about 90 pips or so i think so those were some some uh, trades i took to the upside and to the downside the downside one basically uh basically expecting the abc continuation and trading that abc the upside i was expecting a wave three but it turned out to be more of a wave c in fact probably all right considering this strong downside and yeah that was or doesn't matter those were some trades uh up and down i took uh last uh, couple of days with the euro dollar specifically but more importantly is the fact that um I think that from an analysis point of view, I would be interested in potentially trading this back to the upside if price shows some muscle to the upside. And because not now yet, because this could continue lower, um, I would probably need to see price break above the weekly pivot point, hook back to it and continue higher like this. That bounce spot right there could be interesting. Or as I said, if it manages to break through this zone and hook back and continue a short right there so that's what i'm looking for more confirmation more aggressive traders might be looking for a bounce here deeper that i think here it's a little bit too shallow it's a little bit risky i think to in my view at least to to think about longs at this spot if price were to make it a little bit deeper like this this areas you know this area could uh, could be worth looking for bullish candlestick patterns as a bounce as a reversal trade it's not my cup of tea it's not something i, I like to trade that much but uh, it, it might make sense here in this case because price would in that case you know pretty pretty much be at strong fibs strong support levels stop loss would be pretty small typically because you know the stop loss could go below this bottom more or less that's that is the invalidation level so if price goes through that level it, it really invalidates the setup which is typically the better place to place a stop loss so yeah that's about it for the euro dollar then let's move on i want to cover more things of course 
within our limited time. So pound dollar is uh, showing some uh, bounce here, I think, but needs a little bit more confirmation and a little bit more momentum to break through uh, the resistance. Price certainly respected support, as you can see. The support zone here with the long to moving average and these bottoms and tops. Uh, so, yes, this could be ready for a breakout to the upside. I'm waiting for that breakout to happen personally, but once again, more aggressive traders would uh, be looking maybe for a reversal trade in here. Uh, so, it depends what type of trader you are and what types of trades you like to take. But I prefer break pullback continuations, breakouts, or, or the pullbacks, or the continuations. So that's what I'm waiting for here. To the upside on the pound dollar, let's see if that happens. If it does push through uh, 139.25, then in that case, I think that the bullishness is, uh, you know, the structure is not as bullish, basically, and, and we're kind of in a neutral zone. Dollar yen, I'm very careful with upside. It does very much look bullish looking at the price action and the candles. But I think it's a little bit deceptive because of the fact that I think that it is a wave four. And generally speaking, I think that price could bounce at the 38 or 50 fib. So I think that this could easily be a pullback for more downside. So I'm not too uh, too interested in longs. Yet Nenet liked a, a long setup, but he did it when price broke above the 23.6 fib here. From here to the 38, so it was it was a spot where a counter trend trade uh, made sense. Whether it makes sense right here, I, I don't think so because price is right in between the, around the 38, close to the 50. I think the chance, the odds of a of a bearish bounce here are just too high. I don't think it makes sense to trade it to the upside. Trading it to the downside makes it my eyes more sense but it is a bounce setup and i'm more of a breakout trader so it it might make sense uh you know if you see this candle is not closed yet but if this one is a bearish engulfing twin for instance such a strong such a bearish candlestick pattern um, could be solid enough to to trade to the downside other option could be if you like the dollar yen Short is maybe a break of the weekly pivot point and this trend line, for instance, right? That's a little bit further down the line here, or wait for a break, pull back, continue. And that is typically what I do. I either take the break or the pullback, depending on price action. It really depends on um, how the four hour candles look like, how the one hour chart looks like, whether I take the break or the pullback. It, it depends because if the breakout is relatively small still, then uh, it's worth it. If the breakout is relatively big, typically we get a pullback anyhow. So it really depends on these time, two time frames. I can't say that beforehand, which one I typically take. But I think that um, me personally, the bearish break pullback continue here for one more push lower, one more lower low at the S1 at 105 round level as well makes the most sense at this point for me i you know i think that this is still a correction up but uh, yeah that would change if price either uh, moves very correctively to the downside and is very choppy and it's, you know makes a triangle like this well if it makes a triangle it could still move sideways before falling or obviously, if it starts to aggressively move against the the, uh, the resistance, we have a trend line maybe like this, for instance, and then price breaks above that triangle. Of course, that would also be alarming for the bears. All righty, Aussie. Uh, not a big fan of the Aussie dollar at this moment. It's because it looks bearish to me, but it's not really. It's very choppy price action at this moment it looks bearish to me because price has looks like an abc zigzag here respected the 61.8 fit but this downside and again is moving oh so slow 
And I think it's kind of like in, in a little bit in a, in a no man's zone. And it, it looks corrective. I still lean towards bearishness, personally. I think that the break of the weekly pivot point and the lower lows and lower highs is probably more bearish structure, to be honest. But I am not that keen on trading it. I think that um, dollar and downside looks better. I think pound dollar upside looks better. I think that uh, well, your dollar not not anymore, but your dollar downside looked better, right? That setup is more or less either closed or if you're in the setup with me by any chance, then at break even and you're aiming for a lower target. And a better setup could be maybe uh, the break to the upside or a bounce here. Well, with the Aussie, uh, I am bearish, but I, I'm not willing to trade it, if you see what I mean. I'll keep analyzing it, but I'd rather skip this one. That's my view. QE, probably the same, to be honest. The same for me. It is, uh, it is looking bullish, but it, it, it cannot break the previous top. And it's making this channel. It does look like a bull flag from this point of view. So it's a, yeah, it's also one that I don't think is that interesting at this moment. Alrighty, uh, dollar cad is a trade setup I'm in at the moment actually, and I think this could be a swing trade where if if we're lucky enough for price to break this resistance trend line, let me correct that a little bit. Like this, I'm not sure if it's going to break, but I'm already in that trade. And position myself with you know sufficient distance before the next trend line, so that if the trade doesn't work out, I don't have I have a break almost break even at the moment, the stop loss. If it does work out, I get that extra push up. So let's see if it can break. If it does, that would be sweet. Because in that case, this is looking like a five wave to me at the moment. One, two, three, sorry. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. This looks like an ABC. So I'm expecting one more push up with another five waves. So let's see if we get the breakout. But I think it looks good. If you're not in that trade by any chance, then... Um, Let's see. And probably a probably a daily candle could be good. Yeah, looking for a daily candle, I think. <laughs> for the breakout. More than a four hour chart, because this trend line is more daily trend line than four hours. So daily candle, I think, would be the next step. Your yen is looking not so interesting. It's really very much stuck in this. The upside break, I think, is the only thing that could be interesting at this point. Maybe targeting the long to moving average here. Break out to the upside possible. Um, I'm not a big fan of the euro at this moment, but it did break below the support trend line, so it has some better sentiment. Then again, more or less going sideways too. I'm not a big. I would wait for the moment personally. Uh, euro New Zealand, not a fan either. Pound yen. Is looking a little bit more bullish, obviously, because of this break, the upside. 
But the Dalian is making me hesitate a bit. Dalian, as I said, could turn. So I would be careful of this upside break still. I think it's pretty much counter trend. Pound odd bounced again at the long to moving average. So I do think it is looking a little bit more bullish than the pound yen moving averages are aligned. Breakout above this trend line could be a breakout to the upside here and a continuation. Uh, could be a good to keep an eye on maybe a fib like this, for instance. And 50 fib, for instance, could be a good pullback level. <laughs> Hang on, let me change this. I see that we only have four minutes left. Three minutes. Sorry about that. Once again, I have to cut the webinar a little bit shorter than usual due to a scheduling conflict. Unfortunately, I uh, didn't think about um, the, the conflict of two webinars. We have Fibonacci webinar uh, actually at the top of this hour. So we need to close in a few minutes. Do you have any particular instrument? One instrument I can do probably, maybe two very quickly. So if you have anything in mind, let me know. Anyone, something that you want to take a look at? Stacks? Sure. Alrighty. <laughs> Following the similar pattern, I think, Petter, Petter, you were asking about yesterday about, uh, no, last week probably, I guess about now i'm not sure i thought you were asking about dow jones and s&p 500 but i'm not sure now maybe, maybe not sorry about that anyhow it doesn't matter uh it is looking pretty similar to those stock indices the upside is a little bit weaker though didn't make it to the, to the 61.8 like i think the s p did Let's quickly take a look monthly. Well, it does look like divergence between these tops on the monthly chart. So wave five of five could be finished. This could be the start of a correction, I would say. Let me uh, quickly take a look at a different template here. Yes, we are seeing divergence here on monthly candle and chart, sorry, weekly two. And probably one of the reasons why this downside has been so strong. So with stock indices, it could be a little bit different, but ultimately I would be expecting a deeper correction. Now that might be naive. Maybe I'm looking for it too soon. I don't want to be... Uh, naively um, bearish here because of course the uptrend has been so strong and so long but uh, there is a good chance that price might make an abc zigzag here i would still consider these fibs and the pivot points to be resistance basically and what could happen is that price might make an upside but hip to resistance and then make a downside and ultimately like the other stock indices make a triangle i think all right Need to close now, otherwise uh, Nedit will close it for us because he's waiting to start the other webinar. So uh, check out for more free, um, for a free download of the MetaTrader Supreme Edition, check out admiralmarkets.com to, to download some of the indicators I just showed actually, uh, like Keltner, Pivot Points, Mini Terminal, and many more other features that you can check out. Feel free to check out all of these buttons, a lot of info, analytics, education, but also, of course, how you can start trading. And hope to see you then in the Fibonacci webinar that is coming up in a few minutes. Talk to you soon. Cheers.